Um, welcome back, everybody, and Happy New Year's. I hope you enjoyed your time off, and we're back at her again, all reinvigorated and ready to roll. Um, you have before you a copy of tonight's agenda, looking for a motion to adopt. Councillor Dufert, seconded by Councillor Anderson. All in favour? Motion carries. Thank you. Item number three, any declarations of interest? None being noted. Moving on to item number four, announcements, awards, ceremonies, and presentations. Anything from Council? Councillor Dewey. <coughs> thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just wanted to say thank you to all the volunteers and everyone that helped uh, over the past weekend put on the uh, ladies' territorials, curling territorial. Uh, there's five teams and uh, well-attended games there, so it, uh, just congratulate Team Galusha on their win. They'll be representing the Northwest Territories at the Scotties and uh, all the other competitors including uh, yourself, uh, Your Worship, and, and our SAO on, uh, on a great weekend. Thank you. Anything else from Council? Nothing noted? Administration? Nothing? Okay, item number five, delegation. Community Wildfire Protection Plan we have before us tonight, Danielle O'Leary. Welcome. A little bit about myself and the manager of forest for the South Slave region. Um, I used to be in a debt show um, in Fort Simpson and started my career in 1978 on a fire crew and uh, been working for the government since. CWPP final. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to uh, discuss uh, our updated CWPP community wildfire protection plan. Um, we um, they were initially written back in 2011, and we updated them just last year. And we just like to to uh, discuss. Um, some of the recommendation we have in there and some of the work that's been done since uh, 2011 or if anything else uh, uh, the uh, council would like to see or uh, propose. Okay, thank you. Okay. It's not a PowerPoint there, so. Oh, okay. 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 Okay, thank you. So, like you said, it was written, originally written in 2011 by a contractor. And uh, initially, we had the Kato Dichi in the town of He River into the same CWPP. But what we've done uh, last year is we we just split them. So the capital DC has his own uh, CWPP. So um, so we're looking at the uh, seven disciplines of fire smart: uh, vegetation management, development, legislation, public education and engagement, interagency cooperation, and cross training and emergency planning. So I'll just uh, maybe stick to the really uh, important point here. So there's some map within this uh, CWPP. Uh, did did council had a chance to review it? Oh, good. So if you have any question any time, just uh, just go ahead. Uh, so we have uh, the map here, where it just um, indicates all the different uh, types of land there, uh, crown land and, and town municipality and so on. So 
So we uh, did a, a hazard and risk assessment. So between uh, 2009 and 2018, so that doesn't include last year, uh, they, was, uh, they were uh, within a 10 kilometer radius of the town of Hay River. They were uh, 12 human uh, caused uh, fire and uh, three lightning fire. And I've got a map of this. And there was also some very large fire in the 60s and, and uh, in the 95 that were lightning caused. And so they included 1971, there was a uh, wildfire night near Enterprise Junction. It was a very large one that burned right from the border all the way up to the highway going to Fort Smith. And there's also, this um, doesn't include uh, the town Hay River Fire Department uh, that, uh, you know, especially in the springtime, they've uh, um, initial attacked some of the fires, the uh, grass fires in the springtime, which are quite common, you know, the communities in the north. So th those are not included in this, uh, in this uh, uh, CWPP. So as you can see here, uh, there's uh, the fires uh, that uh, within the uh, town boundary that occurs that occurred in the last uh, well from 2009 to 2018. Oh, can go down, I guess. Um, This in the PowerPoint would have been easier. Scroll down. Nope. I'm just trying to scroll down. It went too far up. Oh, that would be much better with a mouse. Thank you. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we get back to this here. So as you can see, there's a few fires back in 2010, uh, 2014, 2009, 2010 that were really close to the community. Uh, some of them were person cause and a few were lightning. Uh, there were some close to the junction as well. Uh, like I said, 80% uh, of them were uh, people cause and 20% of them were lightning caused fire. And there's that large fire here that we had in 2015, um, just south of uh, Hay River and it burned right across from the community of Enterprise. That was a lightning caused fire. Um, so we're looking at all the different fuel types um, within the uh, planning area. So the forest fuel indicates the potential for high to extreme wildfire behavior exists in the Hay River area. So um, there was some a uh, fire uh, smart hazard assessment for different uh, section of the uh, of Hay River. Um, so there they are here. Uh, so like Paradise Garden is was. Assessed as moderate, uh, Patterson Road moderate, Garden Road moderate, Hay River Golf Club low, the Smith Road moderate to high, Dillon C Estate extreme, Kelly Lane extreme, Mile 5 low, the main town side low to high, Old Town low, West Point uh, low to extreme, and Riverwood uh, subdivision extreme. So here's a um, pictures of uh, each of those areas, uh, just describing what type of fuels in there. Um, the, also the material, materials on the houses, uh, asphalt, shingles, metal roofing, or wood, or vinyl siding. And um, so the, each, the each, uh, description for each of those uh, areas that we just talked about here a second ago. So uh, the vegetation management uh, option. So we're looking at uh, vegetation management uh, consists of one or, or any com uh, combination of following option. So the fuel removal, so it's removing the trees. 
uh, fuel reductions, thin and prune trees, and species conversion. A uh, plant that less uh, flammable trees, like versus, let's say, uh, a pine or, or uh, a spruce tree versus an aspen or a birch. So here are the uh, priority zone and fire smart. And I've got some booklet here that I will be passing along there, the uh, most updated fire smart uh, uh, manual. And so a priority zone, so the first priority would be zone 1A. That's from, uh, from your house up to uh, 1.5 meters, so that's right around your, your building, your house. And zone 1 would be from 1.5 meters to 10 meters. And uh, this is what we call a defensible space. Um, in uh, zone 2, from 10 to 30 meters. And zone 3, from uh, 30 to 100 meters. So here, there's some existing vegetation management area. So there's um, a fire guard that was built back in the 80s. Uh, Sahi River North Fire Guard, and uh, we did some work on it a few years ago. Um, there was, um, I just reopened the, the guard here, as you can see on this picture here, and they kind of straight some of the corner. And um, I've seen some pictures of it, and I think this would be some more work to be done on it. Uh, notice some of the areas where um, needs to be uh, clear to mineral soil. So there's a lot of like willows growing. You look in the 1980s to 2015, I mean, there's willows that size, you know, and fairly tall. And uh, there's a lot of uh, stumps sticking out and that. And I think if we had to use this and have crews working in there, it would be quite dangerous for the crews, especially now, now that they're, they've been broken, so they'd be sharp. And we need mineral soil, so in case we have to do a burnout operation, you want to burn from, from a line that has mineral soil. So that's something maybe we could look in the future, maybe get a dozer in there and just uh, clean it right to mineral soil. Okay, so that's explained the zone, the, the zone 1A. So, um, like, I know, I know, I live in Smith and I've noticed, I know people like trees and that, and some people have trees right against our house. Well, they have their wood pile right against our house, and uh, that's, uh, that's not very good. If we ever had a fire, um, I think we would lose a lot of house in Fort Smith. And I know if you just uh, look in aerial view of Fort Smith, there's, there's houses within the forest, basically, and they're all mature jack pine. And uh, that's, if we have, ever have a fire there, it's, it's going to be a big issue. Okay, so that just uh, explains the different recommendation there. Uh, so the first recommendation is to encourage Resident establish adequate zone one defensible space around their structure. So fire smart starts in the owner's backyard. Instead of starting outside the community, it should start right at people's home. Um, so I, I would suggest that um, um, we, we have here in this, I will pass them at the end of the presentation, but we have a fire ass assessment of the home. So they're fairly straightforward. Uh, we've done them when I was in Simpson. Uh, we did every community's. We had actually uh, some student hired for the summer, and uh, they went and assessed every home in the whole ditch. And um, they, um, they basically talked to the owners and explained to them, you know, what they should be doing to fire smart their home. Sometimes it's not really a lot. Maybe cut two or three trees, move your wood pile away from your house, that type of thing. So um, there's... Um, this uh, manual that I'm going to pass there uh, at the end of my presentation has the, the form for the unit assessment. So they're pretty well straightforward. Uh, I know in Fort Smith, the fire department have done it uh, a few years ago. So, uh, and what we've done, we, uh, we have the trade show in the springtime and then we, um, in Fort Smith, and we ask people if they want to get their, their house assessed and people just put their name and then we we get some of our fire crews to go there and assess their home and just to give them a pointer of what they should be doing. Because a lot of people say, yeah, fire smart my home, but what do I do? So uh, that explains it really well. And uh, second recommendation is the zone two and three fuel reduction maintenance is a responsibility of the land status authority older and should be implemented based on the priority identified in this plan. So we don't uh, like, ENR doesn't go on private land and do fire smarting. 
will we'll, uh, do project outside of people's um, um, land. Like for example, we just completed the, uh, the Vail Island um, uh, Fire Smart project. And uh, the, um, the project was, was the, none of it was done right on people's land. And uh, I, I didn't actually see it, and I'll take a drive over there tomorrow, but I saw a lot of pictures of it, and it's looking really good. I'm, I'm really happy with the work. It's a really well job, well the, the job done. And the mulching, I think, is the way to go. When I was in the Decho, we had, um, a few years ago, we had the money from the federal. So the sixth community in the Decho, and we did a lot of fire smart work with the money we had. But we did it all with people with chainsaws and that. And for, for the amount of work and, and, and the money you pay for, it's, it's not, you don't get the best bang for your dollar. So I think the mulching is the best way to go, I think, versus having people with a chainsaw. So this, uh, this is some of the, um, the, 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 the work that's been done. Uh, so there's the fire guard we, we talked about earlier. So it needs fuel uh, removal, widen, extend existing fire guard to minimum of 40 meter uh, in width. So basically when you do a fire guard, you're, you're looking at the tallest tree and you just you go time and a half the, the, the length of that tallest tree. So that's why, so if you have a tree that's the tallest tree is 10 meter, your, uh, your fire guard should be a minimum of 15 meters. That's just a rule of thumb. Um, the, the town fire guard, so it's the same thing. Sewer fuel uh, removal, maintain existing extended fire guard to a minimum of 40 meter in width. And dispose of debris by piling and burning on site. And those, those fire guard, has, they have to be maintained. And usually every five years, they should be maintained. Uh, it's amazing how fast vegetation grows. I know in Simpson, we had some uh, they were from the 90s, and uh, in 2010, we cleaned them up, and they were, you couldn't even tell there was a fire guard there anymore. They just, they were all overgrown. Um, within the uh, town, uh, there's fuel reduction to space black spruce, uh, two, to three, uh, crown sp uh, two to three meters crown spacing for a minimum of 100 meter wide. So basically, crown spacing is, um, you have, let's say, three or four trees are the crowns are touching. So what you want to do is you want to cut a few trees so the crowns are not touching. So basically the idea is if you have a fire going through there, is you're not going to have a crown fire, but you're going to have a surface fire. And that's a lot easier to, to, uh, to initial attack and to control than having a full crown fire. Um, so I won't go through all each one of them, but uh, there's also a prune uh, limbs to two meters. So it's as high as you could reach. So, so then the same idea is when you got a, a surface fire, it doesn't go up in the tree, especially in spruce. It's, it's not so, uh, so much into, uh, in pine, especially in mature pine, because they don't have too many branch down. But the black spruce will have branch all the way to the ground. And then you'll have a surface fire will come in and then become a crown fire in no time. Or you'd have some torching. Um, so there's basically in this, it just gives uh, different um, uh, maintenance and, and fire smarting uh, for each of the, um, the areas around Hay River that we looked at earlier. So there's a Del uh, Delencia Estates, the old town. So it basically described what should be done as far as fire smart for each one of them. And a third recommendation of the CWPP is to ensure that all existing fuel modification projects are inspected on a regular basis and maintained as necessary to ensure effectiveness. And we just talked about that. And the maintenance should be the responsibility of the land manager or land owner. Land owner. So this is a, a map here of some of the project that's been done. So if you look here, this is the one I just talked about, the Vale Island this area here and uh, around the, uh, uh, the, I guess I would call it a small settlement. And uh, the, uh, that was done by mulching. So um, in the, uh, the owners there, um, I guess they requested the person that was doing the mulching to leave a little strip right on their, on their lot line. So they didn't want to have it all open so they still have privacy. 
but uh, it was very narrow strip there, and I'll have a look at it tomorrow. But um, I think uh, it's good. The people were happy. You know, they, they had their input. And, um, and if you look at the, the area from the pictures I saw, if we had a fire there, uh, I mean, compared to what before the work was done, it was day and night because if you had a fire in there before, it was just really thick in there, you'd have a crown fires, and uh, I'm afraid that we probably would lose a few homes there. But now, <clears throat> with the mulching work that's been done, and we really would have a uh, uh, good chance to control a fire in that area. So those are some of the work that, that, was, that was done here. There was some uh, work done in 2014 here towards uh, going towards the uh, Vale Island there. It's uh, right across where the campground was there. There was some uh, mulching and, and tinning and pruning. Uh, there's the work here that was done in uh, 2015. That, that's in Catlodici, well, the Doza Guard that was done, as well as the Doza Guard that were done uh, from the uh, uh, Highway 5 there all the way across to uh, Patterson Mill. There was a Doza line that was done there because we did some, uh, uh, some ignition uh, operation in there because the fires was, um, was just to the east of it and we were going to try to stop the fire from getting across to the west side of the river because that would have been that would have been a major problem uh, if that would happen so and there's the guard here i was talking earlier that used to be the old guard but uh, i think there's some more work need to be done in there like i said we need maybe to get some a dozer in there and just clean up the mineral soil that would give us a, a good line there if we had a fire coming from the west uh, something we could work fr uh, from we also have the airport the airstrip that's another line that we could use, and we could uh, tie it into the lake. And then we have the highway, and we've got the river, the Hay River itself. Um, I think by establishing control line, uh, if we get a fire nearby and we have to do an ignition uh, because the fire is coming to town, basically, then we have all those in place. That makes our job a lot easier, and we could be really more effective than, you know, you got to build a dozer line, and the fire is only a kilometer away from town. So it's, it's good to be proactive. Uh, the fourth recommendation here is if your new development uh, remove and reduce the effective effectiveness of any existing or proposed fire smart mitigation measure, we introduce new wildfire hazard. The area must be assessed and measure implemented to maintain the community protection uh, standard. So we're looking at, uh, for example, struct uh, structural option like um, I know in Fort Smith there was some house there with uh, cedar shingles. I mean, cedar shingles, you get one little spark on there in your house, is, it's going to burn down, you know. So uh, those, those type of things, uh, they're very important. Um, also the access road standard, uh, very important. So if you have a, our fire crews or the fire department, they have to have a way out and way in. Water supply. Uh, you have hydrant here in town, eh? Pretty, pretty well all, all through the town, or? Two mile five. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, public education. Here's uh, another big one. So this is why we, we have to um, basically get people on board with, with fire smarting their home. I think that's very important. Like I said earlier, is fire smart should start in people's backyard. And uh, we've been trying to uh, uh, really um, try to educate the public um, uh, in regards to that. And we have some people who buy in, some people they don't like cutting their trees around their home. They like this bush feeling, having them, them trees, but the trees are not just a fire hazard. There's also a hazard if you, those trees are going to eventually uh, die, and, and you, know, you get a big wind event, and you've got a, a big pine like that or a spruce, and the treetop breaks and falls into a, your house or your, your home or your kids. You know, and uh, uh, my son had a cabin in the bush, and, and uh, I, I looked at the other big pine there. It was pretty well dead. And, and I told him, I said, you should cut that tree. It's, if you had a wind event there and it falls on the cabin, it's going to damage your cabin. So he went back a, a week later, and I guess the top of the tree, there's a wind event, and the tree broke, 
and it fell right through the roof, and it went right through the bunk bed. Uh, and if somebody would have been sleeping there, the tree was like this, they would have been dead. So uh, he cut the tree after, it's, so you have to repair the hole in, his, uh, in the roof of his house there. There's a lot of damage. So, um, so I think by I think a good way to approach this would be to um, do the assessment of the homeowner, and then we could you know give them some pointer what they should be doing, and I think that would be uh, would would be a good step in the right direction. And uh, you know those things are going to take time, but um, I think like example uh, enterprise is doing a lot of that work. Uh, they're uh, they're the first fire smart community in, in the territories. And it'd be nice to see, you know, a few more. I think that would be great. So uh, here is just some of the uh, things that the homeowners should be doing. And they're in the, uh, in the pamphlet there, and I won't go through all that because we could be here all night. But uh, clearing vege vegetation, combustib combustible uh, material down to mineral soils within uh, 1.5 meter of structures. Uh, Moving your your firewood away from uh, your home at least 10 meters away, uh, keeping your roof and heat clear of leaves and other com combustible uh, debris. And there was some research, research done in I know in California, and 90% of the home that burned, they wouldn't burn by the fires hitting the home, it would by embers. That was the big one, 90% of the home. And uh, there was a fellow there, I forgot his name, but uh, he was in in that or. Uh, uh, Crown um, um, Research Center there at North of Providence. <coughs> I met him a couple of times, and uh, he's uh, he's done a lot of research on that. And uh, he said in California they lose a lot of home, and they're all mostly from from the amber. And what it is is uh, you have pine or spruce, uh, Ponderosa there. They have big cones, and the cones catch on fire, and they're the one carrying the ambers. And if the wind is all in the right direction and uh, you have the right condition, it, it could uh, spot, uh, you know, two or three miles or more sometimes. And so you get one of those landing on the roof of a, of a house, and especially if it has a, a cedar shake roof, then, you know, if you don't have somebody there with a sprinkler and put the fire out, the, the house is going to burn pretty quick, or it falls into the eave trough and there's a bunch of dead leaves. And that's 90% of the home they had lost is because of that. Uh, the fifth recommendation, a public education on acceptable fire, uh, fire smart zone 1A and 1 standard is recommended for all the Hay River residents. So even if we could get that done, if people could do work right around their home, I mean, that would be a, a good st you know, a step in the right direction. Uh, Interagency cooperation and cross-training option. We've done some here with, with the fire department here with uh, Brent. Our forest officer is, uh, is also in the fire department in Fort Smith, and he's done some training about two or three years ago, I think. Just about every year. Again. Just about every year? Yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, we also, he's done also some in Fort Smith, and he's done some as, as well in Enterprise, I believe. So that's something we should carry on. I think we should be, we should be doing that. And I think some, some of the um, volunteer, I think, took our S-131 training, I believe, uh, two or three years ago. Here in Hay River? Yeah, or maybe a little more than that, yeah. Uh, recommendation six, the Town River Fire Department member and agenda, yeah, so we just, what I just talked, should partner on cross-training initiative, initiative to ensure emergency responder uh, cross-train to the following. So the, the wildland firefighters, um, so that would be our S31, the structure and site prepara preparation workshop, the S115, that's installing sprinklers around homes and we did that in 2015 there. Uh, I think it's across the river there. Where, what's that called there? Just across the bridge. Uh, there's a little subdivision there. Riverwood. Riverwood, yeah. We had some sprinkler there set up. There, uh, the incident command system. I think the fire department used the, I, the ICS. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, in the event of a fire, and we have, you know, we have worked with, with ENR in the fire department, and you know you get you get on a fire situation, and you would have a good a, a good work relation, and, and you would know we responsibility for each uh, for each group, so that would you know this is what we're aiming for, and uh, you know that the training is good, and, and I think yearly that's that's be the best, 
because people kind of tend to forget a little bit and get a little rusty. Uh, recommendation seven is develop a community uh, wildland, uh, wildfire pre-plan for the town of Hay River, and then we're going to be working on that this coming summer. So basically what it is is in the event we have a fire uh, near the community, most likely we would have an incident management team would come in. And there'd be most likely a good chance some of those people would be familiar with the, with the area. They want to have the local knowledge. So the, the, the plan we just discussed at one of the meetings we had this morning, so the plan would have things like where the water, where the water sources are, how far are they from the, from the houses, uh, how many sprinklers it would take to protect X amount of house, uh, that type of information. Uh, which business in town we, we could, uh, uh, for logistics, for example, for food or lumbers, fuel, that type of thing. So we get all this information to a plan, and then if they're in the event of a fire, then this would be given to the IMT or the incident management team, and they would have the information to work. They wouldn't come in cold without knowing anything around the community. And I've worked as an, an IC incident commander in BC, and that you, you work around a community, you don't know nothing about the community. And uh, I didn't have this information. I had some local people who kind of, you know, kind of give me a, a briefing and that of the communities and that. But it takes a few days to really get a feel of it. But having a document with all this information would, would, make, uh, would make an IMT a lot more efficient and quicker. And this, uh, this is, again, this is all the recommendation here for the vegetation management. There's uh, a total of seven recommendations. We, we just talked about them. So uh, this updated um, uh, CWPP is not online yet. It's not on our website, but I, I forwarded a, a copy. Yeah, so it should be online here pretty quick. So there's one for each community in the territories. There's 26 of them, uh, 20, I'm sorry, 29 of them. So is there any question? Thank you, Worship. Just a question. So what's the advantage to separating Catalodici from Hay River? Is that, is that, I'm just wondering about that. That was one of the questions. Um, well, we have done a few, um, we've done a few projects there in Catalodici. And um, when I did the, pr uh, the presentation, we did the work in there and the, during the fire in 2015, there was some work that was done around the community. We did some fire guard in that. So and we, we thought that, uh, and I think there was the feeling of the Catalo de Chi that they did their own entity. And, you know, so uh, I actually, I, I sent the email to them to meet with them and do the same thing. So basically what I did is I took some of the information that was in the Hay River CWPP, and I just created a uh, Catalo de Chi CWPP. Anything further? Go ahead, Councilor Anderson. Thank you, Worship. Just a question on the, so on the Town of Hay River Fire Guard, originally constructed in mid-1980, so what are the plans? So we're going to be doing some work this coming well, this year? Well, see, I was just, talking to our director this morning and we have a small budget for Fire Smart. It's $75,000. Some of that money uh, was uh, dedicated to that Vail Island project. And, but the $75,000 is for the whole territories. So there's five regions. So there's, you know, there's uh, 29 community basically. So uh, it's a very small budget. So um, we have had um, put a, an application for some money from the feds, uh, but we, we we didn't get it. But we're going to apply again. But it was uh, twenty million dollars. So I know Saskatchewan got some of that money, and uh, I'm hoping that eventually we will. So if we get this kind of money, then we could get <coughs> excuse me serious, and you know we'll have the money to do the the far smart work. But it's uh, seventy five thousand dollars doesn't go very far. Right. Thank yeah. you. Anything further from council? I got a dozen of them. Maybe I'll just give them to you. Yeah. So this is the, the latest uh, updated uh, Fire Smart. So it basically explains like the Zone 1, Zone 2, and then Ambers, Extreme Eats, Parks, and all that good stuff. And it's at the end here, there is um, 
the form homeowner assessment and there's the form here that explain how to fill it out and then you could rate your home if it's low moderate or high or extreme and ex it explains to you what to do to lower your your hazard so there's a guy doesn't if you need more you let me know Um, I'll have to, uh, I guess we're going to have to get a few more copies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can mail them out free of charge. We'll have them for 1100 a week. Okay, I'll have to uh, talk to our headquarters there. Um, we just, I wonder if we just put them in the mailbox. Can we do that? Mail drop, yeah. Any other question? Anything from administration? No? Well, thank you. Very informative. I, I, I wish I wish you could say, oh, yeah, we've got endless pots of money. Yeah. And we can do all this because uh, we wish I know what should too. be done, you know, but we, we need the money to do it. So that's, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. I Actually, know. we're just we're sending four people to Australia tomorrow. No, Wednesday. It's uh, that's the first group ever going to Australia. Wow. So it's going to be uh, an eye opener for them. <coughs> Thank sure. you. Okay, Very you're informative welcome. and yeah, be proactive instead of reactive. Yeah. So if you have yeah. any question there, maybe you get in contact with me anytime. And okay. Well, thank you Perfect. very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item number six on the agenda, yeah. Councillor sure. liaison sure. reports. I'm going to start with Councillor Willows, but. Uh, Where's the little thing where I could pull my? <laughs> the CEO of uh, Hay River Health and Social Services will be attending a council meeting on the 20th for a quarterly report. Um, I think since last we met, uh, been to a couple of meetings of the interagency group with regard to homelessness and I guess something that maybe we can talk about in council at some date about uh, what we can do to support those uh, initiatives. We certainly need something in this community and of course uh, we need to get the GNWT on side. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Gunnawagan. Thank you Madam Mayor. Um, just in terms of operations the RCMP uh, Nothing new to update at this time. They've been busy over the Christmas season, but no new initiatives that uh, they've informed me of. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Dewey. <coughs> Thank you, Worship. Um, nothing on the youth side of things. Obviously, just coming back from Christmas holidays, but uh, there are more um, Arctic Winter Games trials coming soon, and uh, and on the recreation side, there's a couple things on the agenda. Uh, already this evening for uh, for that. Thank you, Councillor Chambers. Thank you, Your Worship. I would just like to make a note that as of January third, the library is back up and running with their regular hours, and their after-school programming has begun. Um, this month, there's science, cooking, learning to type classes for youth, as well as mm -hmm. painting, meditation, and English second language classes for adults and a variety of others. So there's lots to in to help us get through this weather. <laughs> Great, thank you. Councillor Anderson. Thank you, Worship. Just on the Housing Authority, there's nothing to report from that uh, group. Um, with respect to the Chamber of Commerce, we're in the process of preparing for the gala as well as the annual general meeting. And there will be more information forthcoming. Thank you. Councillor Dupert. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I had a brief meeting with Tom Makepeace from the Senior Society, and as we are aware, Tom is very instrumental in getting the men's warming center up and running. So he gave me some um, numbers and some details on that, and um, it was very, very uh, encouraging information. They have uh, anywhere from three to five people staying there every night. They've been keeping very detailed logs of who stays there. And uh, you can see that there are the same names over and over again, which is 
probably about six homeless males in Hay River. Um, he reported that since they have started using this a couple of months ago that all the, the use of alcohol has stopped and they've really um, been taking good care of the place and are volunteering at the soup kitchen to offset that. So he is really positive about that. He is uh, currently in talks with a couple of other agencies as Councillor Willows alluded to, but he asked me not to go into too much detail because there's different things they have to go. Um, one of the, uh, they're looking at getting funding and, and one of the stumbling blocks is that it's currently on private owned land. So they're looking at different ways to get around that, but it's very encouraging and hopefully that something, they'll be able to get some funding and carry on with that. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to item number seven, administrative inquiries. Asseo Goucher. Thank you, Your Worship. We'll start with the Director of Finance. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, it's a fairly busy time of year for Finance Administration. Our year-end entries and cutoff work is underway in preparation for the year-end audit. Um, this includes closing out prior year capital jobs, entries to recognize deferred revenue, and numerous reconciliations. Feedback from the interim audit uh, from the work that was performed in late November um, was all positive. Um, also performing the annual rollover within our accounting software. Um, and additionally, as part of um, subsequent to the budget being approved, uh, there is a fair bit of work involved in getting those numbers loaded into the system uh, for 2020. So that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you. Director of Protective Services. Thank you, Worship. Um, I guess with Danielle's uh, presentation, everybody's aware of the fact that West Channel uh, Fire Smart project is, is now complete. Um, it's turned out probably one of the best projects we've taken on um, so far as far as fire smarting goes. We've had an awful lot of really positive feedback from the people in West Channel and, and the area, which is really nice. And um, he did mention the budget was 75 k for the, for the project. We used 61000 of that, so we got a pretty good chunk of, uh, of money on that particular project. Wow. <coughs> We're also presently putting together the tender papers for a new ambulance. Um, we, as mentioned in the uh, month-end reports, we are having some significant problems with Ambulance 1 right now. But we're still trying to find a solution to those. Hopefully this week we'll have <coughs> a little bit better news on that. And the other stuff we're working on is pretty much year-end activities, getting our reporting done and, and that kind of stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Director of Recreation. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, <clears throat> from the programming division, uh, just wanted to indicate that we're back to regular programming after a successful holiday season. Uh, stats are in my monthly report regarding the holiday activities, but I can confirm that uh, the special events, the annual special events were well attended, well appreciated, and uh, the new addition of the youth workshops, uh, those were also well attended. Reg registrations were full for most of those activities, and uh, and uh, there was seemed to be lots of interest. Uh, so we have user groups back in the rec centre, uh, and our activities with partners such as... Uh, uh, the meditate, weekly meditation workshops, FAB and RAD uh, for uh, preteens and teens, uh, partnerships with Treehouse and uh, Soaring Eagle Friendship Centre, those activities are back. That includes pickleball and badminton, both at Soaring Eagle and at the gym at Harry Capsule. So we're back to full programming. Uh, our rec programmer is currently taking registrations for her programs for January and February. Uh, it was a little slow this week uh, with registrations, but I think families are just getting back into the swing of things, and registration is actually increasing already this weekend and, and today. Uh, uh, curling uh, bond spiel was mentioned already. Uh, that was a great success, uh, but we also had uh, Figure Skating Club had a power skating clinic at the, at the arena this weekend. Uh, that seemed to be a good success. It sounded like there was good feedback from that. And uh, it's another of the new weekend bookings that we didn't have in the past. And there seems to be 
more interest from those user groups on booking full weekends for uh, for clinics and activities like that. So it's a good sign. Uh, lastly, just wanted to mention that uh, there's consultations ongoing uh, with, uh, so our uh, programming supervisor will be meeting with ICE user groups regarding scheduling for the end of the year and also planning towards next year. Uh, she will also be meeting with community groups regarding uh, community calendar and the use of the, the calendar uh, that's on the town's website and trying to facilitate the use of that, of that calendar. Uh, and we will also be doing a needs assessment and satisfaction survey uh, through uh, an online uh, survey and we'll be putting that directly to user groups and regular users of the rec uh, facilities but also to the general public. Uh, I can update on the aquatics division also. We're still a little short staffed but uh, some changes to staff schedule are allowing us to open on Mondays as of today. Uh, so we haven't been open on Mondays for a while and that's a good sign that we can uh, increase our operational hours that way. Uh, we're still only open uh, noon to 8 on weekdays and noon to 6 on weekends. Uh, but we have the return of a senior lifeguard planned for January 27th, which would allow us to return to early bird swims and aquafit lessons would return uh, on the week of January 27th. Uh, I'll also be conducting two interviews this week, one for... Uh, uh, someone interested in a lifeguard position and a junior lifeguard so we're trying to rebuild staffing uh, that way always to ensure that we can uh, maintain our operational hours. Uh, water quality pool deck conditions have been very good and we've had no unforeseen closures for the past two weeks at the at the aquatic center despite the cold weather. I'm knocking on wood right now uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, going into the cold weather, like obviously it's affecting uh, systems and the mechanical side of the building. Uh, but what I can say is we're way ahead of where we were last year regarding those mechanical systems. And most of the maintenance that's been done and, and repairs that have been done have been done in-house rather than having to go to contractors this year. So I think we're, we've done some good work in the past, in the past year. And again, now it's more of a preventative and, and in-house uh, reactive maintenance rather than being uh, big uh, and and again last year it was stuff that was affecting operations and operational hours and this year we're not seeing those those uh, same needs uh, maintenance I can confirm that uh, the air handler upgrade project for the aquatic center is complete uh, we just have the contractor uh, coming in to do some uh, some updates to the control systems. And again, this cold weather is helping us in that sense uh, because the, they're seeing the extreme conditions that the, uh, that the air handler system and that the control system have, have to be able to react to. Uh, we also had a representative from Simcoe Refrigeration do seasonal checks on the ice plant. Those, were, those went very well. Uh, nothing, nothing major to, to signal. And lastly, uh, our maintenance staff are working more closely with curling club uh, executive members to adjust the heating and ventilation uh, systems, all to improve the ice quality and, uh, and to uh, adjust to, again, cold weather, but also building uh, conditions. Uh, and it's good to see that, uh, that communication cooperation uh, improving uh, or increasing, I should say. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Director of Public Works. <coughs> uh, thank you, Your Worship. Our Public Works guys are dealing with issues around the weather. There was a couple of sewer freeze-ups last week, so that kept them busy for most of the week. Uh, getting 2020 projects underway here, uh, working with some consultants on getting designs done and just getting costs uh, in line for those projects. Uh, the ongoing projects from 2019, the reservoir roof was completed, so that part of the roof projects has been completed. Water treatment plant roof, uh, they're back working on it again. They started last week, so that should be wrapped up hopefully sometime this month. Um, we've, or I've reached out to the GNWT for just some assistance and advice on uh, the tires and how we're going to deal with them, if they have any recommendations or 
uh, contacts in Alberta that we can go through for um, getting rid of our tires. So should hear something back this week. Uh, the person I was looking to get in contact with was away on holidays. So hopefully we'll know more this week. And the water license project is continuing on. There's a meeting on Friday to deal with our extension of the existing water license. And then the technical sessions will happen February 11th to 13th here in town. So those will be the the major ones where all the big issues are discussed. I should have an agenda for uh, those tech sessions later this week as well. And that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you. Assistant SAO. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just a few things going on right now uh, in our area. Uh, one, we will be applying for the, uh, an application submitted for the Healthy Choices Fund. Uh, which is through the GNWT's Department of Health and Social Services. Uh, so looking at, or looking at projects this week uh, to submit uh, for that application. Uh, also working through a couple sponsorship opportunities tied to the Fisherman's Wharf Pavilion and, and that project uh, with hopefully a, a good announcement next week to Council. Um, our 2020 Tourism Development Plan, uh, we're getting closer to having a uh, a draft come uh, this way to Council for presentation, uh, working on a revision now that will go to the Tourism and Economic Development Committee that's uh, meeting this week, or sorry, this month. Uh, we've also been providing support or input into um, our, the Northern News Services uh, produces a, our, a Hay River Visitor's Guide each year. Uh, it's one of our primary uh, print documents that we use to, to hand out to visitors or to encourage visitation to Hay River. Uh, so we're providing a bit of content for view this year just to improve on some of the uh, uh, information that is provided through that uh, brochure, uh, which I think is planned for our distribution in February, so it's coming up soon. Um, trail work continues throughout the winter. Uh, the rotary trail, <clears throat> our interpretive signage has now been produced and is in hand. and. Uh, as we get a little bit better weather, we're, we hope to get those installed. And uh, also on the Great Trail, some other uh, winter and brushing, mulching work. Uh, you may have seen some equipment working alongside uh, between the graveyard and the airport section there doing some brushing or mulching actually on the, uh, the willows on the riverside. Uh, but also planning some, some more work on the oxbow section of the, the trail as well. I uh, had a meeting with the Snow Hay River Snowmobile Club uh, last week, or at least over the holidays, and uh, we're discussing uh, the scope of work that they're looking at with respect to trail work and how we can partnership or, or help, uh, help uh, support them. And I think just one announcement in case it wasn't brought forward before, but our protective service specialist um, uh, resigned in December and we are now, that position's out for uh, recruitments now currently advertised. And that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Just some final comments from me. Um, I have reached out to the territorial government to find out where a few of our files sit, uh, one being the community plan, one being our uh, validation of our debt limit calculations based on our 2018 audited statements and also the status of the government's review of our request for assistance for the landfill fire. Uh, have not heard back on any of those outreaches yet, but uh, the territorial government is kind of just getting back up to speed after their Christmas break. So hope to hear back within the next week and have something to report on at Monday's meeting. Thank and that you. concludes our report. Thank you. Any questions from council? That was easy. Okay, moving on to item 8A. You have before you a copy of the Public Works Monthly Report for December. Um, I need a motion. Councilor Willis. I move that the Council of the Town of Hay River accepts the Public Monthly Works Report for December 2019. Thank you. Seconded by Councilor Chambers. Any questions? None noted, agreed to take forward. 
Thank you. 8B, Protective Services Monthly Report for December. Made a motion. Councillor Grenewagen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Haver accepts the Emergency Services Activity Report for December 2019 as presented. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Anderson. Any questions to the motion? Councillor Anderson. Another question, but uh, just to uh, congratulate congratulate Stacy Barnes on receiving the Firefighter of the Year Award. I think we discussed at the previous council and also Vince McKay has 25 years and so that's really good. So congratulations to both of them. Okay. Anything for any other questions? Agreed to take forward. Thank you. 8C, Municipal Enforcement Monthly Report. Need a motion. Councillor Dufert. Thank you, Your Worship. I move that the Council of the Town of Hay River accepts the Municipal Enforcement Report for December 2019 as presented. Seconded by Councillor Chambers. Any questions? Agreed to take forward. Thank you. Item 8D, Tourism and Economic Development Report for December. Need a motion. Councillor Grenewagen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hoover accepts the Tourism and Economic Development Report for the month of December 2019. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Doe. Any questions? Agreed to take forward. Agreed. Thank you. 9E, the Mayor's Monthly Report for December. Need a motion. Councillor Willows. I move that the Council of the Town of Hay River accepts the Mayor's Report for December 2019 as presented. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Dufert. Any questions? I agreed to take forward. Thank you. 9F, Recreation, Monthly Report for December. Councillor Dowie. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hay River accepts the report entitled Recreation and Community Services Monthly Report for December 2019 as presented. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Chambers. Any questions? Agreed to take forward. 9G, excused absence. Need a motion. Councillor Chambers. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll move the recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hay River excuses Deputy Mayor Bouchard from any meetings taking place between January 14th to February 8th, 2020. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Dufert. Any questions? He's a lot warmer than us. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed to take forward. I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Still cold. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 9GH, Development Permit Application for Two Seasons Adventures. It's D19-100. Need a motion. Councillor Joey. <coughs> wow, long one. A long one. <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. I'll move the long recommendation that the Council of the Town of Hay River review and approve at their discretion Development Permit Application number uh, D19-100 to allow the shower house and move all 15 decks onto the lease property subject to the following conditions. That all requirements of the zoning and building bylaws 1812 are met and that all requirements of the lease agreement are met, that applicant undertakes to conform to all relevant municipal, territorial and federal policies and regulations. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Willows. Any questions? Agreed to take forward. Agreed. 9I development permit application 19 or D19-101 for two seasons adventures. Need a motion. Councillor Anderson. Thank you, Worship. Move the recommendation of the Council Town River Review and approve at the discretion development permit application number D19-101 to allow the larger gray cabin at two seasons to be considered as one of the six approved cabins for tourism use only, subject to the following conditions. 
that all requirements of the zoning and building bylaw 1812 are met, that all requirements of the lease agreement are met, and the applicant undertakes to confirm to all relevant municipal, territorial, and federal policies and regulations. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Dufert. Any questions? Agreed to take forward? Agreed. Thank you. 9J, Recreation Rates and Policy Update for Recommendation. Need a motion, Councillor Doe. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll move the recommendation that the Council of Town of Hay River accept the Recreation Committee's report as information and refer to the appropriate committees of Council for recommendation. Seconded by. Councillor Chambers, any questions to the motion? Agreed to take forward? Agreed. Thank you. Okay, need a motion to go in camera. <coughs> Councillor Willows, seconded by Councillor Dufert. All in favor? Thank you. 